I spent quite a lot of time this year trying to track down the secrets to a high-profile PlayStation 2 game. We initially covered this in our PlayStation Crossovers video, and this shows dozens of times Sony IP have popped up in other games. But one huge enigma is everybody's golf. And when I say everybody's golf, I of course mean everybody's golf and not everybody's golf or everybody's golf or everybody's golf. You may know it as Hot Shots Golf in the US or Minino Golf in Japan. The series had a bit of a tradition of cheat codes being different per region. So Everybody's Golf 2 had Gex, and of course you want to play as Gex as soon as possible. And to do this in the States, you call your save file 2GSH. But this doesn't work in the European version. For that one, your save file must be 2GE. Now that alone isn't that easy to find, but it is at least documented. Pretty simple then, right? Now, Hot Shots Golf 3 didn't get a European release, but Hot Shots Golf 4, or the PS2's Everybody's Golf, had pretty radical regional differences. Out of a roster of 24 characters, only 5 exist across all versions. Japan and Europe share a bulk of characters, but the US version is pretty much completely different. And the caddies are different too. You may be aware the Japanese version has a certain monkey, an ape escape peepo, and this is also in the European version, but not the US one. Interestingly, that's the only crossover character Japan got, whereas the US and Europe also got Daxter and Clank as caddies, but also Jack and Ratchet as golfers. So the US got a good amount, but Europe has every single crossover character, and almost an entirely different roster to the US version. And also, the European version's very British. Don't miss it! No problem! It's uphill! The US version is not very British. Now, the issue when it comes to presenting this content is the European version of Everybody's Golf was very poorly documented. You can unlock all this content naturally, but it takes around 60 hours. That's where cheat codes come to the rescue in, in the US. There's a cheat code option in the menu with a laundry list of codes to enter. Play against all characters, unlock all caddies in the store, unlock every golf ball in the store, every golf club, make items cheaper to buy. It isn't an automatic win, as you still need the game's currency to buy these items, but they're there in the store, ready to buy. You'd have to spend a long time unlocking these otherwise. So the problem for the European version is these codes do not exist on the internet. Trust me, I looked. I dragged in my Twitter following, I dragged in forums, I went through hundreds of pages of Google search. Nothing. Even pages made specifically for the PAL version listed NTSC codes. One of my followers even reached out to the developer of the game for insight, but unfortunately, to no avail. So why not go through unofficial means? We could download a save file. There are no save files. Well, we could use cheat software. Uh, this one doesn't have everybody's golf or a form to add new games, so this was a waste of money. And this one also doesn't have everybody's golf, but it does let you add new games. And look, lots of codes. All courses, infinite points, all characters. But where are all caddies? We've got pretty much every code here apart from the one I want. Where is the Peepo Monkey, goddammit? I was at a loss. The official codes didn't exist in any magazine archives or forums or any means I could find, and even hacking the game wasn't enough. I had given up. But a few weeks ago, I got this message. Hi, John. Uh, just to quickly show you, I'm not leading you astray in any way. This is genuine. Uh, there's no memory card in there. I don't have a second PS2 set up either. Uh, let's just go into the shop. So there we are. I've got nothing unlocked in there. But we go across, and there he is. I actually can't believe it. I really, really can't believe it. This is this is madness. This was all put on the GitHub by a user named Bad Font Keming, who explains pretty much everything I have already. The PAL codes were never preserved. And it's not that they found a long lost documentation. No. They went through quite an ordeal to find them first hand. And I can't think of any better way to explain it than just reading their own words. So here we go. In case you've never played the game, passwords in the PAL and NTSC U versions are six character strings of letters ranging from A to Z. Interestingly, the NTSC J version of the game doesn't use A to Z, instead opting for Japanese characters. No way this would come into play, right? Early attempts involved searching the binaries with regular expressions to find anything that resembled a cheat code. In particular, I was hoping to find many code-like strings adjacent to one another. I even went as far as dumping the memory of the emulated system in case they were part of a compressed block of data on disk. After that approach yielded nothing, I tried to find where the cheat code was actually being stored in memory. Again, to no avail. 
It clearly wasn't being stored in either ASCII slash UTF-8 or UTF-16. After a while, I broke out Qi Engine and did a search for an unknown byte value. This led me to the password entered in memory, which for some odd reason was being mapped to values ranging from 0 times 20 to 0 times 39. What's weirder? These values were being used as indices into some sort of lookup table I didn't yet understand. At this point, it was clearly time to bring out the big guns, so I busted out Ghidra. Something weird about this game is that code is split up into several binaries which are all stored in separate files on the disk. If you open up an individual file, you'll quickly notice a large number of global references, functions, pointers, and raw data. That's normal. What's not normal is that the references themselves appear to be nonsense. Turns out that, despite the game's code being spread through multiple files, all of the files reference data within each other and make calls directly to each other. It's not quite static linking, not quite dynamic linking. I don't know enough to have a good guess on why this is. Apparently on boot, the game loads up all its code files into the exact same regions of memory, making the global references line up consistently. The files didn't match one-to-one -one with the target memory in many areas, and rather than spend time reverse engineering the reasons behind that, I just ripped out the memory from a safe state and opened that in Ghidra instead. It disassembled just fine and left me with a perfectly usable workspace. With the game disassembled and decompiled, I was able to start tracking the workflow more. I hit some major stumbling blocks at several points and learned a very important lesson about reverse engineering binaries. If the decompilation makes no sense, read the assembly first. The PS2 has a MIPS instruction called SUB. This takes two 128 registers and performs 16 parallel subtractions. The bytes don't carry from one another, etc. This came up often in STD-LIB-ish functions, like STRCPY, STRCMP, and STRLEN, which use large register functions when possible to parallelize the process. Due to the fact that Ghidra had no way to express the function sufficiently, it exploded into about 20 lines of unreadable shifts, concatenations, and byte splitting. I would have also been saved from the confusion had I figured out sooner that the nonsense code was being guarded by alignment checks. Life moves on. My first major advancement came when I was able to disassemble the function that was performing the lookup table transformation for passwords. I took a closer look at the table being used and took a wild guess. This is a Japanese game from 2005. What of its shift JIS? Jackpot. The passwords are being transformed into the emoji equivalents of the original characters input by the user. This doesn't aid in the password logic in any way, and most English in the game uses single byte characters. It makes sense for the Japanese version to use Shift JIS, but due to how the password codes are set up, there's no restriction or need for specific character encoding. Maybe it made sense in the original codebase. It's impossible for me to see the preprocessor directives after all. After figuring out that the STRCPY and STRLEN functions were, uh, themselves, I quickly spotted something interesting. A block of code with the password was being compared to a constant string, pale BG. Was it a cheat code? Nope. In fact, once I finished labeling and reversing, I found out the code calling the STRCMP should never get hit, forcing the branch to be taken with a NOP and no notable effect either. Was this a troll password from the developers or testing code left in the game? I choose to believe it's the former because it's more funny that way. My next breakthrough was figuring out the code path responsible for giving the user the the password entered was incorrect message. The method for processing cheats had a very complicated control flow when disassembled. Several gotos, multiple while loops, and tracking variables. And this was a nice anchor to reason around. As I went on, I started to make some deductions about the actual control flow. I found the code path for correct passwords and worked backwards from there, leading me to a giant block of nonsense multiplications against random numbers, arbitrary bit shifts, confusing conditions, all wrapped in a loop. Sight reading the code, I was fearing at first this was an attempt to control flow obfuscation, which I found from experience can take an annoyingly long time to undo. I was very relieved when I saw the loop condition and realized it only ran for six iterations at most, the length of a password. Ultimately, what I found is the passwords are not stored in memory, nor on disk. Instead, they are procedurally generated by nonsense math, which generates one character at a time, compares the current character in the password to it, and repeats until the password is or isn't valid. It then repeats this process for each potential password that can be generated. It seeds this process by pulling a 16-bit value from a constant table of 101 entries stored in memory, and ends when it sees null bytes. Each entry in the table is 8 bytes long, the first four bits describe the two-byte seed, and the next four describe what the cheat should do or unlock. 
Armed with this knowledge, I ripped the decompiled scrambler code and pasted it into my IDE, provided all the seeds, fixed the compile errors, and I was able to generate the table presented below. Whoa, okay, so, let's try one, shall we? So an amazingly huge shout out to Bad Font Kenning for figuring all this out. This person is a genius. I bow to you. We can now play the European version of Everybody's Golf with all of its content. To save people trouble in the future, I've taken my save file and it's now in game FAQ. So you can download that and play with the Peepo Monkey or the European version of the dog, which is much different to the US version of the dog because of course they are. I went into this year wanting the secrets of this game revealed and 2022 has delivered.